Hello everyone, my name is Victoria Vidal and this is my presentation for the Undergraduate Research Conference where I explore social influences on common stereotypes but in a past setting um, to kind of bring some clarity to the fact that, you know, everything isn't just right now, it's always happened. So after reading Hannah Webster Foster's epistolary novel, The Coquette, published in 1797, the exploration of 18th century social villains, The Rake and The Coquette, was immediately intriguing. My research question became, what social influences are leveraged to interpolate men and women into the identities of Rake and Coquette? My analysis explores a concept that social influences within a community are what cause these identities rather than the individual themselves. I explore this idea through advice, domesticity in marriage, and patriarchal influence. I begin with the first social influence, advice. Throughout the novel, there is an exaggerated amount of unwarranted advice from friends and family given to Eliza, Reverend Boyer, and Major Sanford, the latter two being her suitors throughout the narrative. For example, before Reverend Boyer has the chance to meet Eliza for the first time, he receives advice against her from another individual who does not know her well. After these encomiums, will you permit me to say that there's an air of gaiety in her appearance and deportment which favors a little of coquetry? This creates the identity of Eliza the coquette with no regard for true Eliza to be seen. Second, I turn to the influence of domesticity and marriage and look at the rake of the story, Major Sanford. Early on, he states in regard to Eliza, were I disposed to marry, I am persuaded she would make an excellent wife. But that, you know, is no part of my plan, so long as I can keep out of the noose. Whenever I do submit to being shackled, it must be to the necessity of mending my fortune. Foster 122. Major Sanford views marriage as a kind of prison unless it is for personal financial gain, a particularly modern ideal. This lack of desire to be married automatically outcasts anyone who has it. Major Sanford and Eliza both lack this desire and express their thoughts of their disinterest in a lack of freedom. This automatically creates separate social identities of a rake and coquette in the eyes of the community, although there are no cruel intentions behind it. Finally, patriarchal systems and boundaries play a large role in the perception of Eliza. Men take claim over her before even seeing her for the first time, saying, You will think that I talk in the style of a lover, I confess it, nor am I ashamed to rank myself among the professed admirers of this lovely fair one. Later, this same gentleman is turned down by Eliza, and he continues to pursue her, thinking she is just playing games. This stark claim made of her by several men leads them to believe she is encouraging them all at the same time, which is not at all the circumstance. In conclusion, the antagonistic figures Rake and Coquette are majorly created by their social influences and perception in the community, rather than born with the true intentions of the individuals described as such.